Big Carl Shu from Snorkel.tv. Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to continue a little discussion that we had in a previous screencast um, about buttons. Um, I told you how there were really five or more different ways to create interactive effects like rollover and rollout animations on symbols. And I ended up by showing this little example here that just has a bunch of literally static movie clips on the stage and when you roll over each of them they all perform the same over animation and out animation and what's great about this is that there's no nested timeline animations this is literally multiple copies of the same symbol with a little tint applied to them and they all scale up when you roll over and scale out when you roll off and if I roll over just a little bit they'll only pop up a little bit um, and you get this really nice wavy effect so what I'm going to do is just sort of uh, show you how we can assign the same mouse event listeners to multiple movie clips in the easiest way possible. And we're going to be discussing a little bit about the current target value and target value of a mouse event. So let's just close the SWIFT out again one last time. Everything plays nice and smooth. Now, if we were going to, there's my finished file. Let's go to my start file. And I want to just show you that on the stage I have one movie clip here. I'll clean things up a little bit. I'll bring output down here. Um, and it's called NavMC. NavMC contains O1, which is object 1. And then we have O2. And then we have object 3. These things, I'm sorry, are all interesting, all instances of a movie clip just called BG. All right. And this clip is very simple. It's just a very simple shape okay so that's the basic setup inside of a nav movie clip I have multiple instances of one clip that's tinted differently alright now if we were to assign mouse events to all these clips what you might do let's go to my actions layer um, is something fairly standard I already have the event listeners in place for nav over and nav out and what you might do, let me just grab some stuff, something like this. You might go ahead and say, okay, look inside of NavMC for the O1 clip and tell it to add the event listener for the mouse over, and then you will call the nav over function or event listener. Now, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of setting up event listeners and what they are. We can find those resources in multiple places. Uh, but I just want to show you how to simplify this process. So what I've done now is told only the first clip to respond to a mouse over event and to run the nav over function when that happens. And the same thing for the mouse out. We have nav out. All right, so let's test this out. And now one movie clip grows. The rest, they don't know what to do. This one grows, the rest, nothing. Okay, so logically you might say okay well I gotta set all this crap up for every other button that I have well if you have eight of them you know you're gonna do a little copy and a paste and now I have the second one And I'm not gonna sit here all day copying and pasting and changing um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm just going to go out and copy some other stuff and your code would eventually look like this so for every movie clip you're going to add the event listeners for mouse over and mouse out. All right, so that's a good deal of code. Let's test our movie. And now that works. Now that's fine, you know, it works, it's great, but you have a lot of code that pretty much does the same thing over and over again. It calls the same function. What I want to do is show you how we can minimize all of this. All right? But before I do that, I want to show you how this is working as far as the uh, event listeners. For nav over, you know, we're expecting a mouse event to come in as a parameter. And then we're telling tween max to take e.target. Well, what does that mean? That means um, whatever the event was that fired it, the target is the actual object that triggered that event. Okay? Meaning that if the nav mc08 clip calls this function, nav mc08 is the actual target. Well, I can prove that to you by let's 
by running a trace. Let me just trace out what the heck is e dot target. All right, this is going to be a little bit vague. All right, I'll roll over, and then my output says it's a movie clip. All right, roll over this. It's a movie clip. Roll over this. It's a movie clip. Well, let's get the names of these things. So I can say e dot target dot name. All right. And now you'll see the instance names of those clips. All right. So every time I roll over a movie clip, I'm getting its instance name and it's also being tweened. All right. So that's the target value. Remember, the target is the object that fires the mouse over event. In this case, it's each individual clip. Well, watch this, folks. I'm going to get rid of all of this. All right. And again, by repeating all this code, it means that if I had another 10 or 15 movie clips in here, I'd have to repeat it over and over and over again, and it would be very long and unwieldy. So let's nuke it. And instead of applying the mouse over event to each individual movie clip, I'm going to apply it just to the nav MC. All right. And by doing this, check out what happens when we still trace out the target dot name on mouse over. All right, two little lines here to assign event listeners to just the nav, the container clip. This is the sickest thing in the world. All right, aha, it still works because when I'm rolling over the nav, it's still these individual clips that are firing off the mouse over. All right, so all I have to do is apply the mouse events, the event listeners, I'm sorry, to the container clip. Well, I mentioned current target. Well, let's experiment with that. Current target is the actual item that had the event listener applied to it. So that's NavMC. All right, so now when I roll over any clip, NavMC is the current target, but each individual clip is the target itself. And that's the clip that's being scaled. All right, so in my tween max instance, if I said e dot current, excuse me, cap t, well, this means that the entire nav will scale up when I roll over, and we don't have any uh, mouse event offs for a current target. So that could come in handy too, possibly. Let's just undo that. And really, that's all I have to tell you. Um, when it comes to mouse overs and rollovers and what the difference is and what the difference is between target and current target, it can get very confusing. For now, just remember that when using a mouse over or mouse out, target is the thing that fired the event, whereas current target is the thing that the event was applied to. And I'm going to show you an awesome resource because I don't think I could explain this any better. Uh, let's tab over to Chrome, and here we have this site called Wasted Potential. I will link this up on my blog, um, and right here I had to memorize this. AS3 mouse events use two different properties, target and current target. Target is the object that fired the mouse over, and current target is the movie clip that you applied the listener to. You really have to wrap your hand, head around this. Um, I haven't seen this explained better anywhere else. Not from Adobe, not from anybody. Let's not use any names. So this wasted potential dude is doing an awesome job. And here he gives a little bit of an interactive example too, where he shows you how when you use mouse over, um, the target will fade. Okay, And so now it's the individual clip inside of this button. So there's like six different clips in here. And as I'm rolling over, keep your eyes down here. So using target, um, you'll see that even though I rolled over the, the ugly button, just the little circle that I'm over fades out. And you'll see at the bottom that the target is circle three, but the current target is the ugly button. All right, here you'll see that the entire button fades out. And that is because the current target is set to fade. And regardless of where I roll over, all those sub-movie clips fade out. 
Um, you really have to spend some time reading this article using this little interactive tool and uh, paying attention to what events are firing when you're interacting with the various elements. For the most part, rollover and rollout are probably the safest to use because you don't have children firing off tons of events whenever you have nested clips inside of a movie clip. But we can use current target and target to our advantage quite a bit. So please check out Wasted Potential. I'll put this link on my blog. Um, I love this article. And he's got some other great articles here too. Um, why HTML is not going to kill Flash anytime soon. Make some great points. All right. So please check that article out. Back to uh, my world here. Um, I just want to show you. Um, we can have tons of clips inside of this whole nav right here and they can all have the same over animation and roll out animation and again you don't need to go crazy on the timeline and once we have it in place you know I can change the effect of everything by saying you know what let's scale up to five and let's take one second and let's do a uh, bounce.ease out all right, just to make it a little bit different. So I'm changing one thing. Let's get my cursor out of there. And you'll notice that it affects all of these objects. You get this really nice little playful animation here. All right, guys, um, I will link up these files so that you can download them on my blog at www.snorkel.tv. Check them out, um, leave us some comments, and I'll see you soon. Bye.